Hey Internet, welcome to Thermodynamics Tutorial 4-81E. The E represents English units. This is an imperial question. The state of liquid water is changed from 50 PSIA and 50 degrees Fahrenheit to 2000 PSIA and 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Find the change in internal energy and enthalpy of water for compressed liquid tables, incompressible substance approximation and prop and property tables also the specific heat model okay step one find the initial internal energy for compressed water and enthalpy as well if you bought the PDF you can find this table at the back of your textbook you can use your search function control F for the PDF type in table A-4E go to 50 degrees Fahrenheit write down all the necessary variables such as saturated pressure so that's your PSAT and then you've got your VF your saturated fluid and then we've got our and saturated enthalpy of fluid as well okay so just put that there alright so internal energy the initial is pretty easy it's approximately UF which is the saturated liquid or saturated fluid so that's 18.07 BTU per LBM to find the initial enthalpy we need to do a little bit of calculation so hence why we need to find the saturated pressure the specific volume of fluid and the enthalpy of fluid so the formula that we use is HF plus VF multiplied by the difference in pressure the units eventually work out to enthalpy so HF is 18.07 BTU per LBM VF is 0 0.01602 foot cube per LBM so that's your specific volume of fluid and then you got your PSAT so that is 0 0.17812 PSIA and P is your regular pressure so that's your 50 PSIA so P is given in the question if you plug in all your values your initial enthalpy will be 18.21 BTU per LBM step 2 find the final internal energy and enthalpy for compressed water so now we need to go to table A-7E so our pressure is at 2000 PSIA so we go to that we go to 100 degrees Fahrenheit and then we write down the values for internal energy and enthalpy so internal energy final is 67.36 BTU per LBM our enthalpy final is 73.30 BTU per LBM step 3 find the change in internal energy for the compressed water so that is U2 minus U1 so final minus initial 67.38 minus 18.07 that gives us 49.29 BTU Per LBM. Step 4 find the change in enthalpy for compressed water. So delta H is equal to H2 minus H1 73.30 minus 18.21. That gives us 55.08 BTU per LBM. So H2 so that's what we found. H1 we found earlier in step 1. So that's H1 and U1 just from the table. So that's where all the values come from. And that 
concludes for part A for your compress water. Step five, we're moving on to part B now. So find the incompressible water, internal energy and enthalpy. So the initial is the same as step one. So we just go to table A-4 and write the values down. Here they are. And the final, we just use the table as well. Since it is an incompressible approximation, that means we just use the saturated liquid version. So for the 100 degrees Fahrenheit, our U2 and H2 is 68.03 BTU per LBM. Both are the same. Okay, step six, find the change in internal energy and change in enthalpy for incompressible water. So that will be 68.03 minus 18.07. That's 49.96 BTU per LBM. And it is the same for both because they both have the same values. So that's the change in internal energy and that's the change in enthalpy. Okay, moving on to part C, step seven, find the CP for the internal energy and enthalpy. So we go to water, we go to our table for our temperature. So normally you would find the average, which is 50 plus 100, which is 150 divided by two. That gives us 75 degrees Fahrenheit. And from there, we check the CP value. So it looks like there is a little bit of linear interpolation. Although just by looking at it, it's probably just one. But for the sake of just doing linear interpolation, nobody likes to do it, but since we're here, why not? So here's the calculation for linear interpolation. And the X value or your CP value is probably actually 1.00 something, probably six, so something like that. But we're just gonna round it to one just to make our lives easy. And then step eight, we just do the calculation so delta H is equal to delta U, which is equal to C delta T. So the C is actually CP, which is what we found through our linear interpolation. So, or you could have just guessed from the table. It looks pretty much like it's gonna be one. There is a outlier of 1.01, .01, but you could pretty much round that down to 1.00. Okay, so for the sake of clarity, we'll just change X to CP so students aren't confused. Why is X CP? It shouldn't be, it should just be CP itself. I hope that clarifies for students. So Normally X is what you just put for your unknown. I just didn't change it to CP, but that's what we're using. So in the table, they've got it to be BTU per LBM Rankin. So we're just gonna change it to degrees Fahrenheit because really the results are affected by the difference in temperature. So you could do this in Rankin if you want to, but we're not going to do that. We're just going to do degrees Fahrenheit because it doesn't really matter. Okay, and that will give you 50 BTU per LBM. So that concludes part C and answers all the question A, B, and C for 4-81E. Okay, disclaimers. 
the method is correct. However, I do make calculation mistakes. I encourage you to solve it yourself and see if you get the same answer. Thanks for watching. Hope you had a great day. Be sure to like, subscribe, share with your friends, ring the bell, turn on all notifications. Leave a comment below if this was helpful. Until next time, see ya.